クトリガルに侵攻していた和平反対勢力は。Is war happening? It seems like war is happening. Stop trying to make war happen. <laughs> I mean, that would be insane. It would be such an insane way to end the series. Oh, look who it is. Everyone's favorite warm hearted brother of Violet's love interest. We haven't seen his plum yet. <laughs> Has Gilbert become a symbol of peace? Offering dolls, huh? I want to believe. I want to believe he's a good person. At heart, deep down, somewhere. I mean, that is. That would be a great interaction to have Violet come face to face with her lover's brother who's against her and kind of represents all the things that she's hurting about in terms of her past. I mean, they probably have a lot in common. They probably have a lot of mutual pain. It's rich. I don't know exactly where it'll go, but I know it's rich. It's a very rich character dynamic to tap into. I mean, Violet can't forgive herself yet, right? But. So far, everyone loves her and people understand her and are forgiving of her and understand it was just war. The brother, in a way, is a mirror for her own lack of self forgiveness. And I expect that a lot of what Violet will not realize now, but might realize at some point, is that the brother's hatred or disdain for her is not really about her, but it's about his own pain. It's about the things that he can't cope with himself. And somehow, in, somewhere in there is ideas of peace or anti peace or something. Very intriguing. Another drop, another plane drop. Last time she cut her parachute off halfway. I'm not even sure why she bothered with it. No doubt. Yeah. Nothing could go wrong. Nothing could go wrong in the Peace Treaty in anime. I'm having <laughs> Gundam flashbacks. <laughs> Just don't get in, into a helicopter or a plane or whatever it was. Boat and a train. Seems like the journey itself is going to be a thing. Maybe this will be a two parter. This gets very opinionated openly. I want to make everyone as uncomfortable as possible. Ooh, look at them coming to Violet's defense. That's damn true. He's going above and beyond. Ooh, he'll hate that. He'll hate the fact that she's doing well. <sighs> Curious what it what exactly it is. There's probably some resentment about what happened with the brother and Violet's involvement. But deeper than that, maybe there's just a cynicism that anything could possibly have a point. You know, that anything good could come out of their lives at this point. Especially someone like Violet, who was a very big participant in the war, you know, almost single-handedly, or being a big part of the ending of it, the resolution of it, killing a whole lot of people. The idea that she can do some good, actually, I think, would be controversial to some people who feel stuck or have given up on themselves, you know? It's a terrible feeling when you're convincing yourself you can't do things that you, you actually want to do or think you should do, or would make you feel proud of yourself. You know, you sort of write them off because you've kind of developed an identity around being worthless or not worthy or whatever keeps you from having to make the difficult steps that it would take to get there, which is what Violet's doing. You know, she's going through all this pain and suffering to improve herself and that's kind of the the bargain people who are aware of that journey and resist it will you know create stories around why they can't do it and so it's especially frustrating and terrible to see other people do it successfully because that's a that's an attack on one's own status quo it's really tricky i've experienced this you know there's people who have done me wrong and you want to believe you know you want to believe that well they're terrible people and because they're terrible people they'll have terrible lives but more often than not you you watch them you know if you continue to have them in your lives in some capacity you see oh actually they're seem to be living pretty well, maybe are even happy, or, you know, who knows for sure, but at least on the surface, and maybe even a better life than you perceive yourself to be having. And it's like, how is that fair? But when I step back, I think that's actually a gift because one, it's a sign that I'm not living up to the potential that I believe I have in one way or the other. It's sort of a call to action, you know? Maybe even the very events that cause that pain are what's keeping me stuck and it's time to move on. You know, that's me still carrying the other person's bad deeds where maybe the other person has been able to put it down. And you want that, you know? You want people to be able to improve their lives because I think the alternative is terrible. I'm not innocent either. And so the fact that people can have bad periods in their lives or do really terrible things, but in their way, try to make amends by living well and putting good things into the world is a gift because it means that that's possible for hopefully everyone, including myself. That's true. Violet, is, Violet and the show is a perfect reflection of, you know, the truth of pain and emotion in a way that's cathartic. But she doesn't feel that way right now. She's not feeling very good about herself. 
It's hard to see your own value. The good you do starts to feel just neutral. And you can't experience it in its fullness that other people experience it, unfortunately. You're just left with the pain. It's interesting that the rebels are getting this treatment, getting a face. That makes me believe that they too will be given the Toru treatment. There are no enemies. The railroad, yeah. This is going to be key. It's a lot to defend. But what move is it, though? What's their actual plan? The bridge. This is very Valkyria Chronicles and Metal Gear Solid 3. Let me off here. <laughs> But this is so open, it seems like a, a trap. It's meant to lure them in or give them the false idea of what's going on. Whoops. Speaking of Metal Gear Solid. Is that Violet? <laughs> oh, she actually saw her in the train. Okay. Oh, she did see. <laughs> That's amazing. Her eyes. Not sure she's not a robot. Why is she here? I saw you from my plane and I presumably jumped off. At least this time Violet's not alone. Would you stop? <laughs> Please just stop. Take it down any dodges. That's true, she has key information. There's no going back. She's just too connected to this whole thing. This guy just has resting chef face. Tell him, Violet. Ooh. She's not a tool. I bet on some level she wishes she could go back to being a tool. Bridge. Disrupting trade is a great move on so many levels. Having that sort of connection of resources, you also might expect cultural exchanges, which I feel goes a lot farther than, than people might expect. You know, as an American living and traveling abroad, I feel like it's sort of a mixed reaction. There are people who are very, very against America, but I think what kind of saves it is the, the culture, you know, soft power. If you consume certain things, if there are certain things from a country that you love, it's hard not to associate that with the country, you know, like people's love for Japan, for example, and recently South Korea. Countries become familiar to you and you develop a, an affection and regard for them. And once you're familiar with something or someone and have a certain level of affection for them, you start to be able to forgive their flaws. That registers in a certain way that gives that a dominant place in your mind where they're they're sort of on your side, if that makes sense. They're in your in circle. To disrupt the trade between the two countries would disrupt their relationship to a large extent. It would also conceivably put them in a state of material hardship, which is a good recipe for stirring unrest. <laughs> But they're not counting Violet Evergarden, who is the deadliest and prettiest soldier of them all. These guys are just taking people out. Now it's Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> that is literally a shot from FF8. They're severely understaffed, considering this is the special envoy for peace. Haven't they watched anime? And now we're on the same side. We found something more important to aim at together. Wow. I mean, she is a weapon herself, so... You're the tool, probably. The very same. Yeah, yeah, so these guys were important. That's why we introduced them. Ooh. Totally the opposite of the truth. And extra infuriating to hear from Violet, who just had to deliver his death letter to their parents, to his parents and girlfriend. Yeah, you don't have to kill him, but you can, you know, kick him around a little bit. <laughs> what do Violet and Thor's have in common? True warrior doesn't need a weapon. 
Yeah, you would never forget. You would never forget if you saw Violet Evergarden <laughs> just taking people out like she does. Are we writing a letter right now? Let's write a letter. He believed in it. He believed in the cause, and it was all for nothing. I mean, I get it. I get it on some level. I understand. <laughs> Why is this so satisfying? Gotta make sure they don't fall off the train, though. Oh, no! She got hurt trying to save that guy. Damn, her kindness is her weakness right now. <gasps> no! Why do I care so much about the amulet? <laughs> that means everything to her. How could they... I don't understand like, you could just hit by like that. I hate them. This is the major. For her, it's the major, yeah. Gilbert's brother. Well, he has no problem with killing. Oof. Vala doesn't want this, though. She doesn't want to see this. And to live freely. He just hold it against her. No, no, this is just his own pain. And Violet's so vulnerable to this because she feels the same way, on some level. It's her fear. No, no, pay attention, pay attention. Oh no! Oh damn, that was a grenade launcher? No, how are you gonna cut off there? Why are you gonna cut off there? Ah. Uh. Oh man. God, that was such a perfect episode. Speaking of reflections of your pain, you, you couldn't find a better real world mirror for Violet and everything that's still destroying her emotionally. Like this war that has wreaked such devastation on her life and her psyche is ongoing and she's thrown right into the middle of it. And then her, her lover's brother as sort of a stand in for her lover herself and her own guilt about it is directly accusing her of being responsible, which is something that she already feels and can't seem to get away from. And you know what? I bet on some level he's right. You know, I bet on some level she does want to go back to the old way. You know, she does want to go back to just being a tool. I mean, not really, because she's experienced too much to go back. You know, there's certain things that once you see, you can't unsee them. Certain states that once you take, no matter how painful they are, you're gripped by the reality of them and there's no going back. But that's also really painful. And the old way was simpler. It was safer. You could put the burden of perspective and the burden of knowledge of pain and the burden of freedom onto something else. Something that was a little bit more clear, or at least you thought it was, you know, you thought it was safe, but you find out that it was just a barrier keeping you from the truth of the, you know, the pain of the world and the fact that there is real evil, there is real tragedy, and that there always was, but that safe world you believed in was kind of a lie. What makes Violet heroic, I think, while she hasn't fully come to terms with it, she hasn't accepted it, there hasn't been some great powerful revelation yet where it feels good to her, she's still choosing to live by it. This life, you know, this path that she's now walking, refusing to kill, trying to see the humanity and others reflecting on the terrible things she's done her own feelings of powerlessness or you know wishing she had done better to save the major are wreaking havoc on her she's not okay you know nevertheless she's following some higher calling you know, some higher understanding that it's real and that's something she can't responsibly turn away from anymore that is the the beauty and the the power of violet for me in these episodes it's a little bit different i think from how you sometimes see it you, you see heroes sometimes have this grand revelation and then they kind of are robust and powerful in it they then have the the energy to do the things that they, they feel they need to do. Violet is doing the things she needs to do without that. You know, she's suffering. And so you have this unbelievable internal drama where Violet's fighting for survival physically and emotionally, and things seem so hopeless and so pointless because the, the war is ongoing in a sense in some small way. This guy is so against her, yet it's not stopping her. It's not stopping her from becoming Violet, you know, from 
being true to her name, like the major said, a violet growing out of the concrete, you know, a flower growing out of war. About the quote unquote villains in this episode, it was a, a really hard job to get them to have any kind of sympathetic outlook given such a short time. But I feel like for what it was, that short monologue by the, the rebel general, there's something to it. And I think it's very in keeping with the themes. He also is human and he's also experiencing the tragedy of war. He's losing comrades. He's losing loved ones himself. And so what do you tell yourself? You tell yourself, well, it's, it's for this cause. It's all worth it. Their sacrifices will be worth it. But it's not always the case. Sometimes tragedy is just that. It's just tragic. That's it. There's no greater greater cause. Things just get ripped away from you. And while hopefully you can make sense of it one day, sometimes there's just no making sense of it. And even worse is the fact that, you know, even if you win today, there's probably going to be a loss tomorrow. This is not the end of war. Even if they defeat the, the rebels, war will be just a you know, function of human life as long as human life exists. Tragedy will be a part of human life as long as life exists. So what's the point? You know, if there's no solution, if there's no end to it. But personally, I think that the real beauty of life and the things to be preserved and protected are to be found in spite of that. That anything beautiful can exist at all is sort of a wonder. It's a difficult concept to explain. I think I've tried earlier in this reaction, but it seems to me just the, the bargain of existence. You know, things are decaying, things are impermanent, yet things are somehow also growing and they seem to be growing and expanding faster than they're decaying. And that's a testament to the power and potential of life and of effort, like in humans, the, the effort to survive, the effort to find and create things of beauty despite the tragedy. That's what makes these moments of, of real transcendent beauty. It's hard to convince people like that. It's hard to convince people who have only seen pain that there's more, but it's there. And I think if anyone can do it, it's Violet, although I think most of them are dead. <laughs> so there go their plums. Their plums are smushed on the train track. I guess also the Major's brother is not unlike the rebels. He seems sort of defeated by the whole thing too. What was the whole point of war? What was the point I lost my brother? Everyone is just a tool. I'm just a tool. You're just a tool. But Violet knows there's more than that. And I think the real thing to avoid, is, even if you don't believe in, in the goodness, is just to not become the evil and to leave space for it. Don't become the evil you're fighting. You know, that's just becoming the that side of existence that's death and decay and rot and loss of potential. You don't want to be a contributor to that force. But the other side is a lot harder. And I think that's part of what makes it heroic. And that's what makes Violet strong so beautiful and admirable. Overall, just a phenomenal episode. I cannot wait to see the, the conclusion of the actual series before we get on to the, the two, two movies I hear. Mm -hmm.